Uh, welcome. Um, thank you for this introduction. Yeah, I'm an entrepreneur by myself since more than 10 years for now. And uh, on the other hand side, I'm having a second hat. I'm also a researcher at ETH. And now I have the pleasure to talk about, um, to focus on responsible research and innovation with and for society. I would like, in particular, I would like to focus on two topics. And I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. I would like to focus on two topics. The first is that I will discuss a little bit the challenges and opportunities. We have already heard the last day about, talked a lot about really exciting uh, new technology, groundbreaking um, opportunities. But also we, ha we discussed the challenges which with, with are coming with it. And I will like to draw your attention to a different angle. And in the next step, I would also like to, do, to provide some use cases for you, what we have done, what I have done in the last couple of years. I had conducted several research projects uh, to facilitate and to engage a lot of stakeholders throughout the process and be part of this uh, responsible research and innovation um, path we are in Europe on. So, and before I would like to continue, um, in Europe, we have one political concept which has made a phenomenal career. It is called smart specialization. And for me, it's very important that we are all on the same page. For not all of you, a bell rings when I say smart specialization. Um, it is in, in Europe when regions and nations would like to receive funding from different European structural funds. They need to prepare, elaborate, design, and implement a a strategy, a research and innovation strategy, which is in line with the European 2020 strategy for smart, sustainable and inclusive growth. Meaning, they should identify and focus on priority areas where to invest the taxes from all of us, uh, smart, and use the knowledge, use the resources in a really smart way, focus on priority areas, focus on the strength, and so that they really get a competitive advantage in the European area, in the European dimension, but also globally. So every region and nation in Europe, if they would like to receive funding from the European Union, use the taxes, get it back, they have to design such a strategy. And one important aspect is that uh, overall, to give you a pulp figure, it is about so far in the time window from 2014 to 2020, the European Union has invested approximately 650 billion in such smart regions. And these strategies should combine industrial, educational, innovation policies. And one key driving force in this research and innovation strategy is stakeholder engagement. So the Union has focused. If, uh, would like to focus that the more stakeholders engaged throughout this designing process, the better it is for us, for the society at large. And st with stakeholders, I mean policymakers, researchers, so the society at large, every individual, and then business, the entrepreneurs itself. And I would, uh, one driving, one really important element of this research and innovation strategies is called entrepreneurial discovery process. So the regions and nations should really take care about and focus on it to discover, explore and exploit opportunities, entrepreneurial opportunities, and for instance, focus on different areas like digital health or um, 3D printing based on their resources, based on their strength to grow together, to grow sustainable and inclusive. And before I would like to continue, I would like to ask you, I would like to get to know you a little bit better, in particular, if you're optimist, pessimist, after one day of you are full of information about new technologies and so forth. But what do you think, um, in particular, from a European perspective and having a look on these research and innovation uh, strategies, do you think that really online tools, so using technology for us, 
to be part of the whole concept, to, to co-create, to collaborate, participate in the process for future research and innovation strategies so that you can decide where future money, your tax is going to, and your region, your nation is moving forward on which a particular technology should be focused on in which regions. And I would like to ask you this question, and for sharing your thoughts, I would kindly ask you to go to this web page you see on the right top with your smartphone. And actually, we should be connected to the internet so that we can see the results right away. So the technicians should be connected to the internet so that if you, if you go to this link, then you can see the, the questions, the question again. Ah, here it is. I see it already. Can online applications facilitate this entrepreneurial discovery process among different stakeholders so that everybody can be part of it, use different online tools? Yeah, I'm trying. The, the technical partners, please, we need your help. I see it here, but... One minute, one second. <laughs> the link is etc.ch slash h o w six. But do we get this slide again? Oh, great. You see it on the right top corner, etc.ch slash HOW. And then six, please take care about small and capital letters. So, oh yes, particularly all of you are very optimistic. That's good. So far, 30, more than 30 participants. I am asking you this question because in our project, which I will discuss a bit later, we uh, we asked about 800 people when they used our online applications, which should actually facilitate this entrepreneurial discovery process in the region, and we asked them different questions. Um, and it's good to see that you're optimistic as well, that really such tools, high-tech tools, can support us in growing together and particularly defining strategy for the region, for the nation. And why is the entrepreneurial discovery process so important for Europe? Why it's so important to, for, within these research innovation strategies? Why it's important for policymakers? Because most of you know, I'm sure, that SMEs create two-thirds of all jobs. So small and medium-sized enterprises create two-thirds of all jobs in Europe. They generate more than half of the commercial value in Europe. And very surprisingly, or for, for a lot not surprisingly, nine out of ten enterprises enterprises are smaller than ten employees, meaning that they are really, really small, and the entrepreneur is a key player. So this is, these are average numbers for Europe. And unfortunately, we have a huge source of unexploited source of, of entrepreneurship. And some could already guess, but I show you. Some, and these are female entrepreneurs, and it's quite of only three out of ten uh, startups and self-employed are female. So, overall policymakers and um, overall in Europe, we should kind of be aware of that we have an unexploited source of entrepreneurship, and particular females should be pushed a bit more so that we can get out of, can, can use this for our growth, for future growth. I'm not doing any advertisement, unfortunately, because uh, on average, the females, when they have businesses, I'm an entrepreneur by myself, so I know a bit, a bit uh, about it, but they tend to be uh, slower in growth. 
They have lower profits, slower in growth. Uh, usually, they are smaller in size because they have different motivation to establish a company, usually in different sectors, like in sectors where, which are not so growing fast, like health and um, you mentioned also health, education, and um, services, usually. And they have less access to finance. My, and in particular, this is less access to finance, meaning that they are looking for uh, sources of finances which are new, like crowdfunding. And uh, already uh, there is some literature on it that women are particularly successful when it comes to crowdfunding because amateur investors trust in females more than in male when it comes to their private, their, your own funds. I'm not sure if uh, you agree to this. Uh, but overall, females show stronger commitment to sustainability, to environmental aspects, and they are more resilient when it comes to crisis. So in the long run, it would be very good for Europe to move to use this unexploited source of information to push more females into the entrepreneurial world, to grow to, for our economic backbone. Having a look on the global perspective, females are not doing very good because the, the innovation, the innovativeness decreased, and also they are not very active in tech sectors. But on the other hand side, they are very educated, more educated than males, and they, the business gazelles are increasing as well. So one opportunity is that we really discover more and see and focus, improve the opportunity recognition in Europe within this sphere. And so now I would like to give you some use cases, what we have done in this area, and pro present you three major projects that have been conducted so far in the last three years. And one is Online S3. Online S3 is uh, an e-policy platform. It's funded by the European Union. And we created 29 applications, online applications, which help national and regional authorities to design and implement such research and innovation policies and to design the strategy for the future and in particular to participate, to co-create and engage stakeholders. So stakeholder engagement is a, uh, we focus on stakeholder engagement and I will dive deeper into this project a bit later. My second project where we use technology for education, I'm very happy that a lot of colleagues and speakers talked about that education is one key success factor when it comes to high tech, so that we are able to use technology for us and technology is not using us. Um, I will discuss a little bit a small project, an Erasmus Plus project, a strategic partnership project where we focus on a cre game creator tool where students and teachers create games together for education. So they, in class, they are elaborating games by themselves. And my final project is Egypt Stories, where I'm also very happy that a lot of entrepreneurs are here which tell their stories. Um, because from a research perspective, telling stories has a significant impact to you. A short-term impact and a long-term impact, and I will discuss it later a bit. So back to Online S3, which is our e-policy platform where we, call, where we establish 29 applications supporting authorities to design and implement research innovation strategies. And as already mentioned, entrepreneurial discovery is one element which should be part of this strategy. So to explore and exploit opportunities within the region and to, to grow together. And we have established several applications particular for facilitating this entrepreneurial discovery process. And on the first step, there are three applications which focus on regional asset mapping. So the regions have a look on the, the assets within the nation or particular region. Then there is a, a regional profile, regional scientific profile mapping. 
so having, having a look on what is, has been already invested. And then there is a specialization index because they have to focus on priority areas. They cannot invest in different technology. They really have to focus on priority areas to, uh, to, to be competitive within the region, within Europe, on a global basis. And then the second step is stakeholder engagement, I have already mentioned, which is we are the society. Technology should be with, uh, should be used by us, and we should, part of, should be really part of this process so that you can decide as individual where your taxes are used in the future as a region. And for instance, colleagues told already about smart cities. This is particular best practice that European money is going back to the cities are used smart so that the, society, the, the individuals in the city can use it um, in their daily lives. And we have prepared an app which is called Vision Sharing, so different stakeholders are uh, working online and share their vision. Then there is an application which is called Research Infrastructure Mapping, where they have a look on what infrastructure is already there, where are the, re the best researchers, what, how is the knowledge in particular tech uh, sectors um, focused, and then which clusters, incubators, and ecosystems are already built, so where, we, where they can build on it. And in the last step, the step three, um, it comes to decision making. So where to focus in the future, where, is, where people, where the nation should set, set the priority areas and focus, use the investment from the European Union in the region to grow and to create a competitive advantage as a region within a strategy, a research and innovation strategy. And then here we have two, uh, created two apps, the beta clans and these focus groups. So within these these apps, again, different stakeholders are uh, working together. And I have asked you the, the first question because I was interested. We have done the same study with 800 people. We have already analyzed 400 of them. And we took care about the different, um, of course, distribution among females, among work experience. and. I'm happy that you are optimistic as well, because overall we found that our online applications, they really can support using big data, using different, using different stakeholders that they can co-create, collaborate, participate in these different steps when strategic decisions are taken in the region, so for deciding where, where the taxes are actually invested at the end of the day. And we used different questions. We didn't ask the same question as I asked you. There are a lot of dimensions and variables how this entrepreneurial discovery process is actually measured. But at the end of the day, it's really significant. So we can use the tools that we can co-create together. Um, another another uh, game, another project, as I already mentioned, is the Game Creator Tool. It's an Erasmus Plus project. It's a very small project, but we create a game which should enable students and teachers to co-create games together in class and really a games for education, so create games for education uh, together. And my final um, research, in a, uh, research project is called Ship stories. I analyzed different entrepreneurial stories and did a, a quasi-experiment how this impact potential entrepreneurs. And my significant results are that the more stories you hear, the, this will influence your attitude. So you are positive influenced statistically, and it does not matter if, if these are success and failure stories, because there are some literature saying that you usually remember worst things better, so that failure stories have a higher impact than you fear is created, but when it comes to entrepreneurial story, it does not really matter, so let's share our stories, it doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, also intention is facilitated, so meaning that the more stories you hear, you, are, you can increase your intention with it, so very good that we share our stories. Of course, intention is not behavior, so this is an ongoing project for me. 
Actually, I'm at the end of my talk. I hope it was interesting for you, and I thought I would like to be to contribute a little bit to facilitate this entrepreneurial discovery. And I have created a little clip for you. I hope you like it. So at this stage, thank you very much for your attention and enjoy.